Hi, I'm Chrissy. In today's video, I have compiled all of my best tips for playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. So if you are new to the game, then you'll definitely want to watch this one all the way to the end. If after watching this video, you still have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer you either in the comment section or in a future video. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. In this video, I'm going to talk about new islands either deleting your current island so you can start a new one or if you are a new player i'm going to talk about some things that you want to think about before you start your new island so some people might be asking chrissy why would you want to start a new island i already have an animal crossing island why would i want to delete it and all my progress and start all over again well, there's lots of different reasons why people do it. And if you're thinking about it, then you probably have your own reasons. My personal reason for restarting was because I wanted to make a series of videos to teach people how to play Animal Crossing and specifically people who are new to the game. And the best way for me to do that is to start from scratch. So if you have a specific question, please leave comments down below about what specific questions you have and I will do my best to make a video about it. Okay, so you could have a lot of other reasons. Maybe you want a fresh start, but you know, the idea of tearing down your finished island is a really daunting task and you know another reason might be maybe you just started the game but there's something about your island that you don't like and you just found out that you can't change that thing and so you want to restart and try to find what you want before you really do any of the work for the island. No matter your reason, here is how you do it. So I'm gonna preface this by saying that once you delete your Animal Crossing save data and your island's gonna be gone, but so are your achievements, your museum, and your reactions. And if you have Happy Home Paradise, all of your progress in Happy Home Paradise will get deleted. Okay, so with all of that in mind, we've still made the decision. Let's restart our island. So here's what you're going to do. You can't delete your island from an in-game menu. So on the home screen of your Switch, you want to navigate down to system settings. It's the little gear on your home menu. Once you select that, you're going to navigate on the left side down to data management. Once you're in the data management section, you're going to want to scroll all the way to the, to the bottom of that section and look for delete save data. On this screen, you are going to see all of the game data for every game on your Switch but you are going to want to select Animal Crossing New Horizons. So once you select that you want to delete this save data for Animal Crossing New Horizons, you're going to select delete all save data for this software. Nintendo will give you the same warning that I just did about how you can't recover the data once you delete it. You're gonna to want to click on delete save data and then you will have officially deleted all of your game data. So the next time that you start Animal Crossing, you're going to be starting over from the very beginning. Now that your island has been deleted, or if you picked up the game for the first time, here is how you get started and some things that you're going to want to keep in mind before you go through the entire process and save it and all of that. So you're going to start at the airport and Timmy and Tommy are going to take you through a bunch of steps. They're going to have you fill in your name. They're going to have you fill in your birthday. They're going to have you create what your villager is going to start off looking like, which you can change later on. They're gonna ask you to pick your hemisphere. You can have it match up with the hemisphere that you live on, and then you will have the same seasons that you experience in real life, or you can do um, the opposite. So it's just up to you what you want. And so then they're gonna want you to pick your island map. They're gonna give you four choices and you can pick one of those four choices if you like the layout or you can close out of the game by pressing the home button. And then once you're on the home screen, 
Then you can press X to close Animal Crossing and then you can start the game back up. You'll go through the process again and they'll give you four new map choices to pick and you can keep doing this as many times as you want until you are satisfied with the map that you end up picking. Some of the things that you're going to want to pay attention to because you can't change them at some point in the gameplay, the location of resident services, the location of your airport, the location of your river mouths, which is where the rivers on your island connect to the ocean, the location of your dock. This is where you'll meet Cap'n. You're also going to want to pay attention to your beaches because you cannot change any of the beaches and you can't change the rock formations. Oh, and you can also cannot change the peninsulas, the location of your secret beach. So then once you've picked your map, then you're going to want to pay attention to a few more things that you won't know what they are until you get to your island. You're going to want to pay attention to the color of your airport. The possible colors are green, blue, yellow, or orange. So you want to pay attention to that if that's something that's important to you. Airport color also impacts which colorways of certain items are available in your Nook Miles Redemption section. But this isn't as big of a deal now that we have recent Cyrus to customize items. So once you unlock them on Harv's Island, then you can have them customize pretty much any piece of furniture to the colorway that you want. And then also you'll want to pay attention to what your native fruit and your native flower is. This is also not that big of a deal. Fruit, you can just trade with friends or you can visit Nook Mile Islands, you can visit Cap'n Islands. So other than those things that I've mentioned, you can change pretty much everything else about your island. It might take you a little bit of time to unlock those features, but you can do whatever in this game. Your imagination is your limit. Well, kind of. <laughs> Anyways. get the vaulting pole from Blathers the first time you talk to him after he moves into his tent. Blathers will send the DIY recipe for the vaulting pole to your Nook phone so that you can make one and use it to explore the parts of your island that you can't access beyond your rivers. Afterwards, you can also buy it at Nook's Cranny. Once you start building up your island, a vaulting pole probably won't be necessary. They also aren't even necessary at a Cap'n Island because those islands always have a way for you to jump over the rivers. But you will always need a vaulting pole when you go to a Nook Mile Island in order to access the entire island. Once you build a vaulting pole, you can use it as much as you want without it breaking. Be careful to pay attention to the other side of the river before you try to cross with a vaulting pole. One time, I accidentally landed in a hole I previously dug and did not cover up and it was essentially the same thing as falling into a pitfall. So you want to know how to unlock ladders in Animal Crossing New Horizons? Then this video is for you. We are going to learn about how you get a ladder, what you need to build the ladder, what you need to build a permanent ladder to put on your cliff, and also how to find, collect, and place vines, which you can also use as a ladder. So Tom Nook gives you the ladder recipe when you are working on placing the three villager plots. This happens because you donated five creatures to Tom Nook so that Blathers will come to your island. And then the next step is that you gathered the materials to donate to Timmy and Tommy for Nook's cranny. The Nook twins ask for help with their shop after you pay off your first loan of 5,000 miles for the island getaway package. After that, Tom Nook will get a phone call during announcements that someone is wanting to move to the island, so you'll want to go and talk to him at Resident Services. He will ask you to build and 
place the first bridge. After that, he will give you the three villager plots. When Tomnook gives you the three villager plots, he will also give you a bunch of DIY recipes that you will need in order to build the furniture for each of the plots. With these DIY recipes, you will get the ladder recipe. For the ladder recipe, you will need four of each regular wood, hardwood, and softwood. So if you ever get stuck in this process, you can always ask Tom Nook, what should I do? And he will give you directions as to what step you're on and what you need to do to finish that step. In case you don't already know how to use it, when you are holding the ladder, you want to walk up to a cliff as close as you can get and then press the A button and that will automatically allow you to climb the ladder and get to the next level as long as nothing is in the way and you can use the same method getting down a cliff get as close to the edge as you can where there isn't anything in your way and then press a and you will climb back down if you don't already see the ladder once you place plot two out of three of the villager plots that Tom Nook gives you, he will call you and tell you that he gave you the ladder recipe because he wants you to go up onto the cliffs to get your native flower so you can make the flower wreath for plot two. After Tom Nook gives you the ladder DIY recipe in the bundle of recipes that he gives you for the villager plots, Timmy and Tommy will also start selling the ladder DIY in Nook's cranny. And in addition to that, they will also start carrying the ladder setup kits which are permanent ladders that you can hang on a cliff and you don't have to carry a ladder around anymore you can just use the ladder that's stuck on the cliff which you can also customize into these colors natural blue red yellow green or white you can also climb the vines you find these from either Cap'n Islands, if you are lucky enough to get to the Vines and Glowing Moss Island, or if you have Happy Home Paradise, you can go over there and you can take as much as you want. And every day when you go back, there will be more for you to take. All you have to do to get the vines is walk up to the vines, press Y, and you'll put them in your pockets. And then to install them on the cliff, you just need to go up to the cliff and then select them in your pockets, and it'll give you an option to hang on the cliff. On the days that I was filming for this video, I did not end up getting to a cabin island that has vines and glowing moss on it, but I promise they do exist. Here are the other types of ladders you can get in the game, how to get them, and what materials you need in order to craft them. I got this information from an app that I use called acnh.guide. I will leave a link to the app in the description down below in case you want to check it out and use it to keep track of everything on your Animal Crossing island. Thanks for watching. Hit the button. And if you like content like this, subscribe.
If you have learned something new, hit the like button so I know to make more Animal Crossing New Horizons tutorials content in the future. So today's video is all about fishing. First off, why do you want to fish in the first place? One reason to fish is so that you can complete your museum. Not only is it beautiful to walk through a completed museum, but you can also get a cool poster from Blathers to hang up in your house. Some people choose not to donate anything to Blathers so that the museum can stay a tent for design purposes, but there are drawbacks to this that you want to consider when you are thinking about what you want to do on your own island. If you don't upgrade the museum tent into a building, you won't be able to get Brewster and his cafe when your island reaches a three-star rating. The second reason that you would want to fish is that there are a lot of Nook Mile achievements that are related to fishing. These include angling for perfection, island ichthyologist, trash fishing, and cast master, as well as Nook Miles Plus tasks that are as simple as catching five fish or even one fish in particular. All of these are fairly easy ways to earn nook miles, which you can use to pay off your moving fees or redeem for quality of life upgrades like more pocket space, fun stuff like new hairstyles, or tons of DIY recipes for things that you can craft to decorate your island, and even nook mile tickets, which you can use to get more materials or even go on villager hunts. The third reason that that you would want to fish is so that you can sell the fish you catch for bells. The fourth reason is that if you complete your Critterpedia, even if you don't donate any of the fish to the museum, you will still get the DIY recipe for the golden fishing rod, which is from the tool collection with the most durability. The fifth reason that you would want to catch fish is so that you can have CJ make you models of the fish you catch, which you can then use to decorate your home or your island. The sixth reason that you would want to fish is so that when you unlock cooking at three stars, you will be able to use the fish that you catch as ingredients in some of the recipes you can make. Once you cook a dish, you can either use it as a decoration or you can eat it and fill up your belly faster than if you just ate fruit straight from the tree. This comes in handy if you need to move trees or rocks. So how do you get our fishing rod? You get the DIY for a flimsy fishing rod from Tom Nook when you take the DIY workshop from him on the first day on your island that is synced up in real time. This version of the fishing rod takes five tree branches, which you can get either from collecting them off the ground or you can shake hardwood and cedar trees to get them that way. Once you get the DIY recipe from Tom Nook, you will also be able to purchase already made flimsy fishing rods from Timmy and Tommy. The drawback to this version of fishing rod is that it breaks after about 10 uses, which means that you have to craft them pretty often. When you are collecting materials to build Nook's Cranny, one of your villagers will mention the Pretty Good Tools Recipes Bundle. You can redeem this for Nook Miles at the Nook Stop in Resident Services. This bundle includes the stronger version of the shovel, the fishing rod, the net, and the watering can. You will also be able to purchase the stronger version of the fishing rod from Timmy and Tommy once their shop is upgraded to the larger store. There's also a golden fishing rod, which I am currently working on getting the recipe for, so I will go into how to get that DIY in a future video. If you are interested in learning more about how to get the golden fishing rod, then subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. So where can you fish? You can fish in any body of water on your island or Nook Mile Islands or Cap'n Islands. These are the specific places where you can find fish. Your pier, a a pond, the river, a clifftop river, the river mouths, the sea, and the sea when it's raining. So how do you catch a fish? The first step is to hold your fishing rod. This can be achieved either by selecting the rod you want to use from your pockets and then selecting the hold option, or if you have the tool ring, you can press the up button on your left Joy-Con and then select the tool you want and press A to hold that tool. The second thing you want to do is walk do not run to any body of water that I just mentioned and look for a fish shadow in the water. There are six different fish shadows 
that you can see on the screen. I have a link in the description where I found this photo and more information about them. There are a few other shadows that aren't in this picture, including the really skinny shadows, which end up being eels, and the shadows with the fin on top that are either the shark or a sucker fish. Each fish shadow will give you a clue to the type of fish that the fish shadow represents. I will go into more detail on this in a minute. So next you want to position yourself so that you are able to throw the bobber in front of the fish so that they can see it. You throw the bobber by pressing the A button and if the bobber doesn't land where the fish can see it, you can press A again and take the bobber out of the water and try repositioning yourself again. This does take a little bit of practice and depending on where you are, it can be tricky to get the bobber in the correct spot, even if you are an Animal Crossing fishing expert. You will know when the fish can see the bobber because they will suddenly look alert and then they will swim towards your bobber. They will usually nibble on the bobber a few times first and the nibble looks and sounds like this. You will also feel a very slight vibration on your controller if you have that feature turned on. It is so slight though that you might not even notice it. Eventually your fish will bite, which is when you want to press the A button to reel in your fish. For the longest time, I thought you had to hold down the A button in order to keep reeling in the fish, but your character still finishes reeling in the fish even if you just press the A button versus holding it down. You can tell the difference between a nibble and the bite because the controller will vibrate more noticeably the bobber will go all the way under the water and the sound will change to this sound here. Once you get the hang of it, you will figure out a method that works best for you, but the way that has worked the best for me is that I turn up the game sound so that I can clearly hear all of the fishing noises. And once I know the fish is swimming towards my bobber, I close my eyes and just listen to the different sounds and press the A button when I hear the bite sound. This helps me a lot with timing. If I don't do it this way, I usually press A a little too early and scare the fish away. If you are working on catching a more rare fish, Sometimes you need more precise timing. So if you are having trouble with timing playing in docked mode, I recommend playing in handheld mode so the Joy-Cons are directly connected to your Switch so you can eliminate the delay of the controller sending the signal wirelessly to the Switch. So how do you know where to find a specific fish? If you are looking for a specific fish, there are a few ways that you can figure out where to find that fish. My favorite, favorite, favorite method is using the AC h.guide app which I downloaded to my phone. I've talked about this app in previous videos but I will put a link in the description for where to find it. You can also find various guides online by searching keywords such as Critterpedia Guide ACNH and you will likely find a website that has information sorted in a way that makes sense to you. For this video all of my examples will be from the app because it is my preferred method and I like that I can check off the critters that I've already caught and then I can filter my list down to the information that I'm looking for at the time. So I usually like to remove all of the creatures that I have already caught and then filter it further so that I can only see the creatures that are catchable when I'm playing the game. This makes it a lot easier to focus on exactly what I need and not waste any extra time. So the reason that I mention all of this is that a majority of the fish in the game, they only spawn during certain months of the year, during certain times of day, in specific locations, and even sometimes only when it's raining on your island. It is necessary to know all of this information as well as the size of the shadow you are looking for so that you don't waste any time on the wrong type of fish. So all of the guides that I have found when I was looking, they all have all the information that I had talked about previously, and they also include how many bells that you can sell each of these fish for at Nook's Cranny. If you are looking for a specific fish that is currently not catchable at the time you are playing, you have a few options. The first option is to figure out what time that fish is catchable and under which conditions, and then you can just wait until it's that time 
time and then try to catch it. The second option is that you can go to a friend's island that is at a different time of day or a different season than you, which can be achieved if they live in a different time zone or their island is on um, the opposite hemisphere view. So if you're a northern hemisphere, then you can travel to a friend's island who is on the southern hemisphere and vice versa. The third thing you can do is if you have three stars, you might be able to get lucky on a Kappen island. If you are looking for fish in a specific season that you've already experienced on the island you're playing on. The fourth thing you can do, which is not for everyone, but it might be for you, you can time travel to that specific time of year or time of day to get that specific fish. So you know know what kind of fish you want to want to catch you know that they are available in the pond or the pier or whatever you know exactly where they where they spawn but there is no shadow there so how do you get the shadow how do you get the fish to spawn so you can catch it well you can make bait you make bait by digging up manila clams on your beach so you may have noticed they are the little black holes in the sand that squirt water and then they disappear and then they come back again and do it all over but you just want to dig where that black hole and the water squirt appeared and you will dig up the clam if you don't if you dig and you don't get the clam but you saw it in that general area either wait for it to spray again or or just keep digging in that general area to find the clam. So the first time that you dig up a clam, you will get the DIY recipe for fish bait. And basically it is one manila clam equals one bag of fish bait. So a tip that I have for you is that when you are digging for a lot of clams, make sure you fill in the holes that you dig so that the new clams have plenty of space to spawn on your beach. So once you make the fish bait, you can go up to any body of water, select the fish bait and select scatter food and the fish will spawn. If you were looking for a specific size fish and the bait spawns the wrong size, then you can just throw another bag of bait on the fish to scare that fish away and a new size will spawn in that place. So you can keep doing this until you get the correct size shadow that you're looking for. And I know this kind of seems like it's a waste of bait, but it's not. It's the best advice that I have found. I've tested it myself. I saw it on somebody's um, video from like two years ago. But basically, if you do it where you throw bait and then you get the wrong size fish and then you try to catch that fish or you scare that fish away by like running around near the water and then you throw more bait, it is completely possible that you'll get the same size fish over again. But if you throw bait at the wrong size fish, then you will definitely get a different size shadow the next time. So now we know you can get bells for fishing and a lot of people, they need bells. So how do you get the most bells for your fish. Once you are at the point of selling fish, the absolute best method is to save all of them. And you can either put them in your home storage, you can stack them up in a room in your house, or you can stack them up somewhere on your island and then you just wait for CJ to come. He usually comes about once a week and the acnh.guide app actually you has a function where you can track all of the people who come, all of the characters who come and visit your island. So you can know kind of when you might be expecting uh, CJ to your island if that is something that you want to go through the trouble of doing. So if you sell them to CJ, then he will give you the most bells for each fish in the game. So if you have the time and the space to do that, then I definitely recommend that method. But if you don't have the time or you don't have the space for it, then the next best method is to go into Nook's Cranny and sell your fish directly to Timmy and Tommy. The absolute worst way to sell your fish is to sell them in the Nook's Cranny drop box. So you get the least amount of bells for selling fish this way. Basically, you get the amount that Timmy and Tommy would buy your fish for, and then they take a 20% convenience fee off of that and then they that's what they that's what they the money they give you for that item and it's it's not just fish it's for everything and then they will deposit it directly into your savings account the next morning the only time that i would recommend that you sell to the drop box is if you do not have the space for storing them until the shop opens back up or CJ comes to your island 
and the shop is closed. Today we are going to learn everything you need to know to catch bugs in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I do a lot of tutorial style videos. If that is something that is interesting to you, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. So why do you want to catch bugs in the first place? The most obvious reason is so that you can sell them for bells. I'll go into how to make the most bells for your bugs later in this video. Another reason you want to catch bugs is so that you can complete your critterpedia and or museum. The museum looks cool the more bugs you add into it. When you complete your museum, you can also get a poster from Blathers that you can hang in your house. And when you complete your Critterpedia, you will get the Golden Net DIY. You also want to catch bugs because you can get Nook Miles for catching bugs. There are all kinds of Nook achievements and everyone always needs more Nook Miles because there's a ton of things that you can spend your Nook Miles on. The last reason that I have is that you can get Flick to make models of all of the bugs that you catch so you can decorate your island so you could do like a garden with butterfly models in it or you could do a spooky island with models of scorpions or tarantulas you want to catch bugs but you don't have a net how do you get one the first kind of net you get is the flimsy net you get this DIY from Tom Nook after you finish the DIY workshop with him where he teaches you how to do the flimsy fishing rod he'll give you a couple of other DIYs and one of them is the net. You get the regular net DIY from the Pretty Good Tools recipe bundle. I talked more about this in my how to catch fish video. You will also be able to purchase a regular net from the up upgraded Nook's Cranny. And finally you can get the golden net from catching all of the bugs at least one time in the game. I'm currently working on finishing the Critterpedia for for my permanent island. I have a series of videos on my channel each month for that. So if you would like to follow along, you can subscribe. So where can you find bugs once you have your net and you're ready to catch them? You can find them in a bunch of places. You can find bugs on the beach. You can find them on the ground next to trees. You can find them flying or flying near flowers, flying near lights, flying near trash, flying near water, from hitting rocks, you can find bugs on flowers, on hardwood or cedar trees, on palm trees, on the tops of rivers and ponds, on rocks or bushes, on the ground, on tree stumps, on villagers. You can find bugs pushing snowballs when it's winter on your island. You can find bugs from shaking trees and from digging holes. Wow, that's a lot of places you can find bugs. So how do you catch a bug? In my opinion, the hardest bugs in the game to catch are the scorpion, the tarantula, and the wasp. I already made videos on how to catch each of these individual bugs. They're on my channel in my Animal Crossing tips playlist and I have linked them all in the description for you. So I have broken down all of the other kinds of bugs you can catch into a couple of different categories. Okay, so the first category of bugs that you can catch are ground bugs, bugs on flowers, rocks, stumps, bushes, and they are all caught in a very similar way. So I'm going to go over that one first. So with a lot of these bugs, you want to hold your net and sneak up to the bug that you want to catch. You sneak up to them by holding down the A button and walking slowly towards the bug. And then when you get close enough that you think that you can catch it, you release the A button and you should be able to scoop up the bug if you're the right distance away from it. It takes a little bit of practice to learn what the right distance is. So just keep trying until you kind of figure it out and then you can eyeball it from there. So if you don't catch the bug, most of them will just disappear and you'll have to wait for them to respawn. But the absolute worst thing that can happen to you if you miss catching a ground bug, they will run up to you and sting you and then you'll pass out and wake up at your house and they will also disappear so then you can't catch them. But even though that sounds pretty horrible, you actually want it to happen to you at least one time because there's a Nook Miles achievement for that. The next type of bug that you can catch are the flying ones. So with flying bugs, you can try pretty much a 
as many times as you want to catch these just by running up to them and pressing A. A lot of the flying bugs are too fast for you to sneak up on them. That's why I suggest running towards them. Also, a lot of the butterflies will fly slowly until you try to catch them. And then if you miss, they will start flying faster to try and get away from you. Keep trying and you will eventually be able to catch these bugs, especially since they don't despawn. Okay, so then the next type of bugs that you can catch are from hitting rocks. When you are hitting rocks, sometimes the pill bug or the centipede will come out of the rock along with the materials that you can find in rocks like iron or stone. And if you aren't sure how to break rocks, I also have a video on how to do that. So I will put a link in the description. So my recommendation here is that if a bug pops out of your rock when you are trying to get the materials out of it, then I would stop trying to get the materials out of it switch to your holding your nets and then go after the bug and then from there you would just want to catch the pill bug and the centipede the same way you would catch any other ground type bugs. So the next type of bugs to catch are the ones that are found on trees, so like on the trunk of the tree. With these bugs, you want to sneak up on them the same way you would sneak up on some of the ground bugs that we talked about. Just be careful not to get too close because you might scare the bug away from just being too close. Or if you get too close to the tree, instead of scooping up the bug when you try to catch it, you will just hit the top of the tree with your net and then that scares the bug away as well. The next category of bugs are bugs that are found on top of the wall. Water. So for that, you just want to get as close as you can to the edge of the water while you are holding your net. And then once the water bug gets close to where you are standing, you can press the A button and you will scoop up the bug. It's one of the more easy bugs to catch in the game. The next type of bugs that you can catch are bugs on villagers. Every once in a while, your villagers will get fleas and they will complain about how itchy they are. And you will also see a little bug flying around their head. So in order to catch these, you will want to stand behind the villager with your net and press the A button like you're gonna hit them with your net, except instead of hitting them with the net, you'll scoop up the flea and then they will be so grateful to you. You will also get friendship points for getting fleas off of your villagers. So if you are working on trying to get the villager photos for all of your villagers, then this contributes to the total point for getting the photos. You can also catch bugs from shaking trees. The thing with getting bugs from shaking trees is that you don't know exactly which trees have bugs in, in them until you shake them. But from my experience, you won't be able to get bugs from shaking palm trees or fruit trees or money trees. So you can only get bugs out of regular hardwood trees or cedar trees. The other thing that I have learned from this is that bugs will come out of the tree not just from shaking them but if you just go up to a tree and start trying to chop the wood and you haven't shaken it that day. I always recommend that even if you're trying to just chop a tree for wood or chop a tree down that first you hold your net and then shake it in case there is a wasp in that tree. And I go more in detail with how to do that whole process in my how to catch a wasp video. I will link that in the description. The other kinds of bugs that you can get from shaking trees are spiders and bagworms. So to catch these, you will stand in front of the tree and shake it as if you were assuming there's a wasp in there. And then the spider or the bagworm will drop down on one side of the tree. So you will want to stand over on that side of the tree and then press A to scoop up the bug. The next bug you can catch is by digging holes. So the only bug that I know of that you need to catch by digging a hole in the ground and digging it out of the ground is the mole cricket. So you will be able to hear a sound that is very specific to the mole cricket. It sounds like this. Once you hear that sound, you want to start digging holes. The louder the sound is, the closer you are to wherever the mole cricket is. Once the mole cricket comes out of the hole, you switch to your net and catch it just like you would catch any other ground bug. 
Finally, the last type of bug, you can't catch this one, but it does appear in the game. So I thought I would include it in this video so that you knew how to get rid of them. They are bugs inside your house. You need to step on them a few times and then they will go away. Usually you get cockroaches from not playing your game for a little while or from time traveling. How do you know where to find a specific bug? I've mentioned this app in several of my other videos, but in case this is the first video of mine that you are watching, I will go over it again. My favorite method to keep track of bugs in this game is by using the acnh.guide app. I will put links in the description for where you can find it. The reason I like using this app is that I can check off all of the bugs that I catch and donate to the museum. And then I can filter the list of bugs so that I can easily find the information I'm looking for. Typically, the way I would use this is, say I want to see all of the bugs that I have not caught but that are catchable in August and during the time of day that I am playing the game. That gives me a smaller list so I can see exactly which bugs I still need to find, where I need to find them, and if I wanna sell them for bells, how many bells I can get for those bugs. If you don't want to use an app to keep track of your bugs, that's fine. You can do a Google search for the complete list of bugs in Animal Crossing New Horizons and find the information you are looking for. I personally really like the Animal Crossing guides that I have found from the Polygon website, but there are also a few other websites that do a really good job with giving the same information. How do you get the most bells for your bugs? Before I sell new bugs that I catch, I always like to donate the very first one to the museum. So once you're ready to sell your bugs, it's pretty much exactly the same way as my advice in the fishing video that I just did. The best way is to sell your bugs to Flick. You get the most bells from selling them to him when he comes to visit your island and he usually shows up about once a week. The second best way to sell bugs is to sell them directly to Timmy and Tommy inside Nook's Cranny. This method I would recommend if you don't have the storage space in your house or on your island. Maybe you're short on bells and you need some fast money. The worst method for selling anything in the game is the drop box because no matter what you are selling, you are always going to get 20% less than if you just wait for the store to open and talk to Timmy and Tommy in the shop. So I continue to not recommend this. find out the secrets to catching a scorpion without digging tons of holes in this video. The first scorpion I always donate to Blathers in the museum. All scorpions that I catch after that I sell directly to Timmy and Tommy for 8,000 bells. Don't sell them in the drop box, it's a huge ripoff. Here is the catchable times for scorpions. First you're going to want to scare away all the bugs. On this day it was snails, wasps, wharf roaches and hermit crabs. Don't run around your island with your net out in case a scorpion comes out of nowhere and stings you. When you're ready to catch a scorpion, get your net out and sneak up to him. When he does that thing with his arms, you wanna stop, then you can walk again. And you keep doing this process until you get close enough to scoop him up in your net. 
Want to catch a tarantula without digging a bunch of holes? Then this video is for you. Catching a tarantula is similar to catching a scorpion, so watch that video next to learn about how to encourage spawning and advice for selling. I'll put a link at the end of this video. Here is the info for the conditions you can catch a tarantula. When you are ready to catch a tarantula, get your net out and slowly move towards it. Stop whenever it does this. Repeat this process until you get close enough to catch it. Have you just started a new island and have zero bells? Do you have an insane amount of debt with Tom Nook? Do you need a ton of bells to decorate your island? Or are you trying to complete your museum, but this keeps happening? Watch to the end of this video to learn all of my secrets for getting rich from diving for sea creatures and for completing your museum. The first thing you're gonna need to do is buy a wetsuit. You can buy one in resident services from Redeeming Your Nook Miles or you can buy one from Timmy and Tommy if your shop is upgraded. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is wear your wetsuit and empty your pockets. Now that you're ready to catch your sea creatures, go to any of your beaches and press A to enter the ocean water. You can use the left joystick to control which direction you swim in and to, to swim faster, you want to spam the A button or just basically hit it over and over again. And when you're ready to dive, press the Y button. The next thing you want to do is randomly swim around the ocean until you see bubbles. So you want to swim as close to those bubbles as you can and then dive down. When you are under the water, you will see a shadow. Have your character swim over that shadow and your character will automatically grab the creature and swim back up to the surface and identify what you caught. You will find that there are sea creatures that don't move at all, slow moving sea creatures, and fast swimming sea creatures. Most people have trouble catching the fast swimming sea creatures, but here is my tip for how to catch them. So the way that you do that is just use your left Joy-Con to steer yourself in the direction of the bubbles and wait for the clouds that kick up from them swimming to settle down. So all you see are bubbles and no clouds. Once the clouds settle, dive down and start swimming in the direction of the shadow as fast as you can. And sometimes it will take you a couple of tries to do this, but keep going and keep trying because you will definitely get it if you keep using this method. The fast swimming sea creatures love to zigzag, so sometimes they accidentally zigzag right at you. So just keep going, keep being persistent and you will get it. So one of my tips for getting the most sea creatures possible, you want to empty your pockets on any beach as soon as you fill them up with sea creatures and then immediately go back into the ocean. And this will maximize your efficiency to get more sea creatures. My next tip is that when you are working on diving and filling up your museum, what I like to do is the first time I catch a sea creature, I like to set those sea creatures in front of the museum so that you can donate all of them at once and you don't accidentally sell any of the sea creatures that you want to donate. So my next tip is to download an app on your phone. It is called acnh.guide and I keep track of everything in this app, but my favorite thing to do is to keep track of all of my Critterpedia. Part of what makes this really helpful is that you can sort all of the critters based on what's catchable now. The other thing that it lets you know is the shadow size and how fast they are so you can kind of get a good idea of if it's gonna be easier, if it's gonna take you longer, and then you can plan accordingly from there. So another one of my tips is to sell directly to Timmy and Tommy 
go inside of Nook's Cranny and talk to them because if you sell at the drop box outside of the shop, you won't get as many bells. They take 20% off of the price that you would get if you sold it directly to Timmy and Tommy for convenience fees. While you're diving for sea creatures, you're inevitably going to catch a scallop and the first time you catch a scallop each day, Pascal will pop up and he will ask you if you want to trade the scallop for either a mermaid DIY or a pearl that is used to make a mermaid DIY. The first time that that I catch a scallop, I always say no to him so that I can donate it to the museum. But the next time you get a scallop, he will come up again and say, did you change your mind? And you can say yes and he will go and exchange the scallop for either the mer a mermaid DIY or a pearl that you can use to make the mermaid DIYs. So here is my updated Critterpedia. At the time of filming this video, I had all of the winter sea creatures in the northern hemisphere and I started working on getting the spring sea creatures. I am about halfway done completing my Critterpedia. And for all of you completionists who want to fill your museum with all of the sea creatures and complete that part of your Critterpedia, here are the sea creatures that I have caught so far in the museum. My four-year-old especially loves going to the museum and walking around. I hope these tips have been helpful to you. Please leave a comment down below if there's something that I missed and I'll see you next time. If you have gotten value out of this video, please consider subscribing. YouTube thinks you would really like the video that's on screen now, so you should watch that one next. Stay crabby and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!